Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back to a brand new video. Today we are going to be rebuilding Borussia Dortmund. If you do enjoy these rebuilds, please do leave a like on the video. Be sure to comment who you want to see get rebuilt next. And please do subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. This way you're never going to miss an upload when I premiere a video or when I go live on the channel. But let's get into this into the first season. But before we do, let's have a little look where the media think we're meant to be finishing. So when you take on the job at Dortmund, it's pretty common. It's common sense that they are sort of second favourites in the Bundesliga, I'd say. So the media prediction is going to be second, just behind Leipzig, I would imagine. Obviously, Dortmund are that team which they they bring up so many good players, but then Bayern Munich come in, they sort of just hunt who they want, pick out who they want. As you know, Leipzig fall victim to that as well from Bayern. So I do enjoy doing sort of Bundesliga rebuilds because it is nice to eventually knock Bayern off the top. And hopefully that is something we can do in this rebuild. But going into our first season, we've only been given eight and a half million pounds, which isn't a lot in football terms when it comes to trying to sign a player. Obviously, you can do installments, but it's not good to do loads of installments all the time. So I'm not entirely sure who we are going to be able to bring in in this first transfer window. But let's go and have a little look anyway and see what we can do and get into season one of the transfers so it might look like there's a lot going on but obviously a lot of these are sort of done before i was at the club um so obviously you know you've still got your jade and sancho's in here obviously went to manchester united the one player we did decide to sell is going to be torgan hazard to verona for 22 and a half million purely because you'll see literally coming up now he doesn't fit into the system we're going to be playing um so i thought instead of just having him written on the bench we'll sell him for the money we can get so that is what we did 22 and a half million which is quite good it's probably worth about 27 so maybe undercut ourselves a little bit but we got what we could for him at the time we then go and spend quite big to be honest we do spend quite big but that was because he was on the market and i thought do you know what we need another midfielder especially considering we're playing free in midfield so we need that depth so we go to napoli to pick up fabian for 83 million after the installment so a very expensive player actually worth over double that though to be fair to him 25 years old world-class midfielder everything very well balanced when it comes to attributes reasonably tall he's got good decisions good first touch good passing good technique good teamwork and he can play in like three different roles in midfield quite four four, four different roles to be fair to him quite comfortably so i mean it's definitely worth getting into the team and it helps sort of add an extra player into that midfield and this is what the team looks like. So we are going to be using the Meta and Register RDF tactic. So full credit to him where it is due. It's a very good tactic. And the reason I'm using it is because, to be honest, I want to try and I want to test out a register. I rarely get to use them. And I thought, you know what? We've got the opportunity to use it in this save. Let's give it a go. And the team that is going to be representing us into the first season is going to be Cabell, Shul, Hummels, Akanji, Guerrero, Chan, Bellingham, Fabian, Marlon, Royce, and Sebastian Haller. So Definitely a few positions in here I would strengthen. The ones that come to mind would probably be, obviously, this front three are good, but possibly bringing in a more world-class striker for one of these positions. Um, maybe sort of sorting out this right-back area, because sure, I would rather play at centre-back. Obviously, we do have the likes of uh, Munier, who is okay. But again, long-term, we will definitely look to strengthen there, and possibly also with Hummels, who is obviously getting on a little bit. But let's get into the first season and see how we do. So that is the first season done, and it was a very comfortable season. We managed to win the title quite comfortably. Unfortunately, we did go out in the pockle. We lose in the Super Cup final against Bayern. And also, we had a great run in the Champions League. But unfortunately, again, made it to the final and lost to Manchester City. But they are a very good team, so I'm not going to be too annoyed about that. We were the best at scoring goals, scoring 108. 24 goals conceded, which is quite good, ranking us the second best. In terms of stats, we'll have a little more in-depth look at the stats instead of just going off this. So, the highest match rating is going to be coming from Gorejo. I mean, he had one hell of a season. 34 assists and four goals. We then had six goals, six assists, sorry, and 39 goals from Royce. Two assists and 12 goals for Hummels. Nine assists and 23 goals for Ademi. Obviously, a player which I didn't even talk about. Um... He's, he's a youngster. He's basically, he, he's not quite ready to get into the first team, possibly next season after a season like that. But for the first season, he wasn't in there right from the rip. Up next then, we've got Bellingham with nine assists and 11 goals. Good season for him, considering he's a midfield. Um, Hallow with seven assists and 13 goals. 10 assists and 11 goals for Fabian, the new man, obviously having quite a good season, considering he's not the more attacker midfielder. He's not in the Metzala. 
Um, eight assists and 24 goals for Marlon. 12 assists as well for Shul. Lowest ranking player who played a lot is going to be this guy, which is Rayner. Not a player I'm going to slate too much, considering he doesn't really fit into this system. He's more of a winger or very attacking midfielder. So that could be a player I look to move on into the future. But for now, we'll keep him and he can sort of come on when he needs to. In terms of money, then going into the next season, we've got 63 million to spend. There are a couple of players I do look to, or one player I want to offload is going to be Hummels because he is getting older and I did try and offer him a contract just for a one-year extension and he didn't want it. So we will try and sell him. Also, we have got a little bit of an issue with Akanji. He's not happy at the club. So hopefully we can keep him because that would save us signing another centre-back because he's already a very good one. But let's get into season two and see how we get on. Well, unfortunately, we couldn't keep Akanji. He didn't want a new contract. I tried to, I literally tried to offer it to him twice, different dates, and was not having it, just unhappy. So we had to cash in on him to Inter Milan for 34 and a half million. The only positive to this is at least he didn't go to a direct rival. Obviously, if he would have went to Bayern or somewhere like that, they didn't really need him, but at least he's not in the same league. It's not going to affect us too much. The only time we're going to face him is possibly in the Champions League. I really rate him, so it is a shame that we have lost him. And then Hummels. I just wanted to get anything I could for him because he was going to end up retiring soon anyway. So I thought for 11 and a half million, we'll let him go to Lazio. So the Serie A have gained two good centre-backs in one season. So that league's just got a lot better. We then managed to replace him, to be fair, which which I think, if if not the same, if not better, um, first player we bring in is going to be Chabala from Chelsea for 60 million. We then go to Roma and bring in Tammy Abraham for 65. And then we go to France in Monaco to pick up Badashil for 34 million. Now, obviously, we've definitely come out slightly better because we've managed in the same season. We've lost two centre backs. One of them was definitely on the out, though. We brought in two young centre backs and definitely a very, very good press and forward striker, whatever you want to say. This is going to be the first guy then, which is going to be Chabala. Obviously, we've all heard of him if you watch English football. Very good player, six foot four, good tackling, very young as so, well, only 22. Um, and he's just. He might, not, he might not be as good as Hummels purely based off attributes just yet, but he's definitely got the potential to do so. And that's what we're, that's what we're building. We're here for five years. We've got, we've got time to build these centre-backs into sort of elite centre-backs. So that is why I brought him in. But it obviously needed... I wanted to bring in a more a more dominant striker, whether that be the advanced forward or a press and forward. Tammy Abraham does prefer to play as a press and forward, I've figured out. So... That is where he's going to be playing, but this guy's pretty much got it all. He's an elite striker at 24, good finishing, reasonably quick considering he's six foot five. He's also got good jump and reach, good balance. He's just a, just very good, to be honest. I don't know what else to say about him. He's a player which I sign a lot in Football Manager because he does genuinely remind me of sort of like a Harry Kane figure, but just a little bit quicker. And because of his age, you've got years upon years of use of him. So why not give him a go at the end of the day? We then decided to bring in one more player. I brought in this guy purely because one, I rarely get to use him. Two, he was available on the market. And three, he just looked very good. He's going to be Badashil. Again, very similar to Chabalar in terms of the ability and potential. I think Chabalar might edge it a little bit in the stats. But again, reasonably tall, very strong. I don't think he's as quick as Chabalar. Good jumping though. Good tackling, and again, he's 21, resolute personality, and a player that has got years to become a world-class centre-back in this team. So that has definitely strengthened the team. This is going to be the team going into the second season. And to me, there's not too many weaknesses in this team now. You've got um, Cabell, Paslak, um, Badashil, Chabala, Gorejo, Emre Chan, Fabian, Bellingham, Ademi, Royce, and Abraham. Obviously, at right-back, we do have Munier, there he is. I don't know why he wasn't in there on this screenshot, but Munier obviously is going to be the first team right back there. Um, the only position I really can think, the only thing going forward is possibly adding a little bit of depth into the midfield, possibly a better right back, possibly better fullbacks, depending on how they age. But Guerrero at the moment is aging brilliantly. He's not, he's not fooled enough at all. So let's get into the second season and see how we do. So... The second season was the season of winning everything, basically. I wasn't expecting this purely based off the fact that we've literally had two windows to bring in players. We managed to win the Champions League versus Bayern, the Pockel versus Bayern, the Super Cup versus Bayern, and let's face it, the Bundesliga versus Bayern, because they were the only ones on the same points. We managed to beat them on goal difference. So quite a few goals, 10 goals in it. Luckily, we were the best at scoring goals. Not as defensively solid, Um ranking fifth this season but I do think that could be because we've brought in two new centre-halves obviously it's always a risk 
because they have got to adapt to the league and it's not going to be pretty in their first half of the season, possibly the first season. So not as good at conceding goals. Um, you know, 39 is a lot higher than what we did see, but luckily we were good at scoring them. And is that going to be Abraham getting the top goal scorer as well? Going into the stats then, we've got Guerrero contributing with 19 assists again with four goals, three assists and 17 goals for Haller. Abraham having a great season, 16 assists and 29 goals. 12 assists for Schools, obviously the fullback. 16 assists and 21 goals there for Ademi. 5 assists and 20 goals from midfield for Fabian. Marco Royce, again, a player who is, when we see his age, 34 years old, but still contributing with 30, not 30, with 8 assists and 25 goals. Um, 13 assists coming in from Mori, obviously the backup right back. And we've got Reyna actually having a lot better season than what he did have with 10 assists and 15 goals. 5 assists and 12 goals for Marlon and 10 assists and 5 goals for Bellingham. Bellingham actually having one of the worst sort of match ratings this season, but we pretty much won everything, so I'm not going to slate him. I mean, he couldn't have been playing that bad if we were managing to win everything. The, the worst player in terms of match rating is going to be Cabell, or Cobel, whatever you say that. So that's our goalkeeper, but when you've got players scoring this amount of goals, I mean, these amount of goals and assists, goalkeepers are never going to be up there in the match ratings anyway, so we're not going to slate him too much. And going into the third season, we've been given £65 million to spend. Obviously, I don't know who we've got that needs to leave. Obviously, some players don't want to stay at the club, some do. I always offer contracts to players because you don't want to be seeing players go out on the free because it just it's not a good sight. It really isn't. It's not helpful when players go out on the free at all. But let's get into the third season and hopefully, hopefully bring in some more players. Before we do get into the third season, though, guys, if you are enjoying this video, please do leave a like on the video and comment who your favourite side-in is so far. And last but definitely not least, do subscribe to the channel because there's tons more content coming up shortly. But let's get into the third season and hopefully bring in some more players. We even got into the transfer window. This felt like a sign-in in itself. Bellingham's contract wasn't out of date just yet, but I wanted him to just sign a new deal just so we get to keep him for the duration of this save. And that is what we managed to do. It's a five-year contract worth £42 million. So it's a lot of money, but that is what you've got to pay for the top footballers. And he is definitely a top footballer and a player that I didn't want to lose because he is literally irreplaceable in my opinion. The third transfer window then, nothing going out this time. It's purely players coming in. And we didn't actually spend a lot. We spent less than what our transfer budget was because there's no point in spending if you don't need to at the end of the day. We were able to bring in Benjamin Sesco from Salzburg for £17.5 million and Agate from Sporting for £38 million. So bringing in another striker and also another sort of registered type, type player, I'd say. This guy is a player that I've not signed before, only 22, and again, looks very good. Pretty, pretty well-rounded. Reminds me of Fabian in many ways in terms of how well-rounded he is. Probably not as good in terms of the tackling side compared to Fabian, but he's only 22. He's got good potential as well. And a player that probably will get into the first team right off the rip. Same with Sesco. This guy can definitely give a little bit of competition to a Demi. Um, I don't think he's right there with Tammy Abraham just yet. But this guy, if, if, if we know anything about Sesco, obviously he's a great player in real life. Um, very strong links with United at the moment, actually. But this guy can easily become the best striker in this team. He's a very, very good player. Obviously, he's a wonder kid as well. Um, 15 finishing already at the age of 20. Reasonably tall quite quick in many ways he's very similar to abraham in terms of what type of striker he is he's tall but also he's quite quick good finishing you know good off the ball as well which is good to see um so him and abraham are quite similar to be honest with you so it wouldn't surprise me if he plays as a press and forward as well and that is actually exactly what happened this is going to be the team then so that front three is looking lethal now we obviously we'll start off from the goalkeeper going up we have got Kobal, Munier, Shul, Chabala, 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 Guerrero, Agate, Bellingham, Fabian, Sesco, Abraham, and Ademi. Now, that is like a wonder kid front three. Apart from Abraham, he's not a wonder kid, but he is still a very, very good striker. And this team, I am very confident with. Going forward in this team, the one position or the two positions I can only really see that they strengthen and by a decent amount is going to be the fullbacks because they are both 30 plus. Um, so possibly they could drop down to be in rotation and we could get some youngsters in. But going into the third season, there's no reason why we shouldn't be winning the league. So let's go into the third season and hopefully carry on winning the title. That is what we've done. 
the third season we were able to win the Bundesliga, lost in the semi-final against Bayern in the Pockel, but we did beat him in the Super Cup. We also, if you're wondering what happened in the Champions League, we didn't get grouped. We lost in the finals, as you can see down here, to Bayern Munich. So it's a little bit, little bit annoying. But at the end of the day, as long as we're winning the title, we've won the Super Cup as well. There's two trophies. It's still silverware coming in. We're ranking the best for scoring goals, only conceding 28. So we're ranking the second best, which is a big improvement on what I think was fifth last season. Going in then to what is going to be the stats is going to be 35 assists for Guerrero and seven goals. At the age of 30, he's one hell of a fullback. Um, we've got four assists and 10 goals for Haller, slowing down a bit. We have just brought in another striker, so he's probably playing. He's probably been playing as, as you can see there, actually, hardly any appearances. Tesco, 11 assists and 40 goals in his first season. Actually being the top goal scorer, what a signing he has been. Abraham with 14 assists and 22 goals, 6 assists and 11 goals for Schull. Um, 13 assists and 17 for Bellingham, which is a lot from midfield. Marlon with 3, go um, three assists sorry, and 11 goals. We've got Ademi with 10 assists and 18 goals. 10 assists and 9 goals coming in from Fabian and 6 and 9 coming in from Reyna. Now, this front three, I'm liking what I'm seeing because it seems every season there's a new top goal scorer, which is good to see because they're all linking in, they're all assisting each other and that's the whole point of having a front three. It's not all about having one striker getting all the goals. Obviously, one season it was Abraham, one season it's Sesco, and it's not always the advanced forward that gets the top goal scorer. Obviously, recently it's been the press and forwards, so... That's good to see as well. They all chip in. They all get goals. And we're also, if you if you look at this column here in the assists and you look at the players, we're also getting a lot of assists from players that aren't really like midfield players. Um, we're getting a lot of assists from fullbacks, for example. The fullbacks are getting a lot of assists, which is what you want to be seeing when you're playing a narrow tactic because at the end of the day, that is pretty much your width in, in the system. Unless the midfield players get out a little bit. But in terms of actually going forward up the pitch, the fullbacks are pretty much your only piece of whip that you have. So a very good season. And although we didn't, you know, win as much as what we did in the second season, we can't really be too annoyed by it. And going into what is going to be the fourth season, then we actually have been given £82 million, which is a ridiculous figure, um, obviously, because you can also do add-ons. So there's definitely going to be some strengthening going on in this team. There are a few players which I do consider, which I might consider offloading um, if we can get the right amount of money for them. So let's get into season four of the transfers and hopefully strengthen this team a little bit. And this is where it gets interesting because season four is where there is a lot of money spent. Just before you worry about us spending 186 million, just remember we did actually have 82 million and 114 million players, 140 million pounds worth of players have been sold. We didn't want to sell Cham. But unfortunately, he wanted to leave. So we had to cash in, otherwise he was just going to play out his contract. So we got £54 million for him. We did want to sell Wolf and Rayner. We got £23 million for Wolf and £37 for Rayner. And unfortunately, Alexandra Meyer went on the free to Holstein Kiel. But I feel like the players we brought in are definitely an upgrade, to be honest with you. Um, Dean Henderson obviously isn't a replacement. That's just another goalkeeper to have. He's good competition, potentially could even get into the first team. We've got Nuno Mendes from Bayern there for £77 million. Again, I didn't mind paying that for him because it is directly weakening an arrival. Obviously, the closest team to us is going to be Bayern. PSG, we actually signed Jose Gregara for £41.5 million to strengthen the midfield more defensively. And Vitinha from Bayern as well, £54 million, who is going to be... I want to say competition for Bellingham and Metzala, but I don't think he'll probably outcompete him. Um, but definitely a good player to have in the team anyway. And Dest from PSG as well. So two signings from Bayern, two signings from PSG. And these players were purely brought in to sort of, well, the fullbacks are to start because then the older players are going to be sort of depth players. Um, Gregera was there to sort of just give another option to replace Chan in that register role. And Vitinha was there purely to add another midfielder, another man, offer something different in midfield. So the first side of them was going to be Dean Henderson. Obviously, he's agreed playing time. His first choice, but he is bang on equal with Koble. So they're literally going to be battling it out for first team. So that's up to him. He's got to take the challenge and he's got to take it, you know, I, I'm a person that genuinely believes a goalkeeper needs to have a one-on-one -on -one challenge to get in the first team. Sort of when, like, um, perfect example that comes to mind is when you had Kepa and Mendy 
at Chelsea. Obviously, I know Mendy won that by quite a bit in terms of ability, but for a while, you know, that was always going to be a question, wasn't it? We then have Nuno Mendes, who's going to slot in at left back right away. He's very similar to Guerrero in terms of ability right now, but he will be starting because he is good enough and his potential will surpass Guerrero by quite a bit, to be fair. We then go in with Guerrero, a player that I've never signed before. His attributes are honestly very good. Again, don't want to keep saying it, but he reminds, he reminds me of Fabian quite a bit, to be fair. He's only 24, elite midfielder, and a player which, to be honest, if he doesn't instantly get into the register role, he definitely can get into that team somehow, even if he, you know, he, he fills in here and there when he can. We then go in with Vitinha, and this was this was part, two reasons why I signed him. One signed him was because it was Bayern, and he had quite a good season for him, so I wanted to weaken him just to keep weakening him and pushing him down the table if I can. And the second reason was because he is going to be playing second fiddle to Bellingham, but at the end of the day, Bellingham isn't going to go flawless. He is going to get injured sometimes. And this is a great guy to have in his place when we need to have, have a player in that position. And the last player then is going to be Dest. Now, this guy, you guys know right backs are so expensive on Football Manager. It's really weird because left backs, you can get really good ones um, for a reasonable price. But right backs are ridiculous. I don't know if that's just in this save, but I was really struggling to find a right back. So I went with Dest. He's not my first, he's not my first pick, being honest, but he is a decent fullback. Someone that can do a job quite quick, to be fair to him. Only 23 as well, so he's got years to play. And I thought, for that price, it's not horrific. Obviously, worth a lot more than what we paid for him. And he is going to go into the first team. But let's get into the season then. And hopefully, with all these signings, we can improve a little bit defensively, especially. That's what we've done. We managed to win the Bundesliga title. We won the Champions League against Shakhtar, which is very weird to see. I don't know how Shakhtar got to the final, but fair play to him. We won the Pockel, lost the Super Cup to Bayern, but I'm not too fussed because obviously that's still a treble winning season. And we, we won the big ones, to be fair. The Super Cup is obviously the sort of pre-season one. Um, ranking the best at scoring. And this is this is the area I'm a big fan of. The, the new signings clearly works because we only conceded 12 goals. Now, if you guys think about that, I mean, there's 34 games in a season and we only conceded 12. Hardly any goals at all. So defensively, we must be one of the best in the world quite easily. I mean, that is one hell of a season for defending. I mean, overall for trophies as well, but 12 goals. I don't think I've actually seen a season lower than that. So fair play to them. Um, in terms of stats, then we have got four assists and we have got 15 goals coming for Hilaire. Guerrero coming in with 22 assists and eight goals. 28 assists coming from Mendes, or Menge, whatever you want to say. Um, Sesco with 11 assists and 44 goals. We've got 10 assists and 39 goals for Demi. That is outrageous, that is. Is that Abraham down here as well? And we, I'll, I'll get to it in a second. We've got 15 goals coming in from Schul as well, probably from set pieces. 14 assists for Vitinha and 6 goals. And this is what I'm saying. Abraham, 11 assists and 22 goals. So you've got 44 from one, 39 from one, and 22 from another. That is a ridiculous amount. That's loads of goals for a front three to be getting. And what I'm liking is they're all split out in between different players, which is exactly what you want to be seeing. We then have Marlon coming in again. Obviously, a player that's probably more coming on as a sub. Um, 12 assists and 8 goals. Bellingham contributing with 11 assists and 16 goals. 18 assists coming in from Des. So even he is pushing up and getting loads of assists. And to be honest, it's working really well. The team's gelling. The players are getting lots of goals. The front three are linking up. And it's now going to be the matter of looking, spending some time to see him where we can sort of strengthen because the team arguably doesn't even need strengthening, to be honest, because we're, we're winning a lot of trophies. But going into the last season, we have been given a budget of 84 million. Obviously, this can go up if we're forced to sell anyone. Hopefully we're not, but you never know in this game. Let's get into the last transfer window and see who we can pick up, if anyone. Well, this is going to be the last transfer window then, season five. And that is going to be Dahoud. Did want to leave. I can understand. He wasn't getting played a lot. He's actually worth quite a bit as well. So we let him go to Frankfurt for 34 million. I didn't mind selling him to a Bundesliga side because he's not exactly he's not exact exactly gonna be that good. Sorry, that good to um sort of knock me off my perch. We didn't we did end up having quite an expensive window, I'm gonna be honest. Um not intentionally though, but we brought in quite a few. In fact, we actually brought in four defensive players, and I'm gonna explain why. Although we just had one very good season at conceding goals, not for conceding goals, but preventing 
goals going in. We we didn't have that good backup, to be honest with you. Um, so I brought in from Dynamo Kiev, we brought in Zabrani from Southampton, we brought in Salisu, who's obviously very good on this game. And then we actually it's gonna sound weird, but we, we accidentally, and I did genuinely say that, and I mean it, accidentally brought in two backup fullbacks who both play left back. I thought that Sosa was playing right back. I don't know how I got that wrong, but I guess he could if needed to. But first guy is very, very good. Um, there's so much competition for these centre-back spots now, so it's always a good thing. Um, 15 tackling, very quick, quite tall as well. Um, and again, 22 years old, so he's got tons and tons and tons of years of football in him to become absolutely world-class. We then go ahead to Southampton and bring in Salisu, one of my favourite centre-backs on this game. Um, elite centre-back at the age of 26. His tackling 17, one of the highest I've actually seen. Um, quite tall as well, very quick. Good stamina, good strength, good positioning. And this guy, for me, is easily going to get in the first team. I'll be very surprised if he doesn't. He, he walks into most teams in the game, to be honest with you. We then go and get our backup left back. And this was the guy we were actually meant to be getting. He's going to be Grimaldo, um, a very, very good player. Obviously, we did end up losing Guerrero, unfortunately. But this guy can sort of replace him. He's not as good, but as a backup, he's quite attacker minded. So hopefully he isn't going to get caught out too much. But one of the reasons why I got him is because he's used to playing that complete wing back role. So for me, he, he fitted in very well. And then this guy was... This is my accidental signing. I thought he was a right back for some reason. Um, I only signed, I typed in his name and just signed him because I've, I've used him before as a backup and he was actually quite good. But to, to, it ends up, he, he's actually just a left back. But there's no harm in it. His emergency backup, he isn't going to sulk. And I guess if we've got two two left back injuries, then you never know. We, we, we're going to be good, aren't we? Um, but no, that's the first time I've accidentally signed a player, which is always interesting. And this is going to be the team then going into the last season. It's going to be Henderson, Dest, Shul, Salisu, Mendes, Fabian, Bellingham, Vitinha, Tesco, Ademi, and Abraham. And now, I mean, that team is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. If you look at the bench now, you've got Kobe, you've got Zabrani, Agate, Marlon, Badashil, um, Krigera, Haller, Mori, Brandt, Munier, Ronaldo, Chabala, Sosa, Oskan, Paslak, Schlotterbach. We've got a lot, a lot, a lot of good players. Some of them players also aren't purely squad players. Um, obviously, especially the centre-backs, any one of them players can get in the first team. So it's all about just having that depth, which we've definitely got now. So if anything, we should even be more defensively solid than what we were last season. But let's get into the last season and see how we do in terms of results. I'm going to be honest. I accidentally simmed past, like, the... Do you know when you finish a season? And then it tells you, like we see on the screen, all that, like all them nice stats on the screen. I accidentally sim past that into the following season. So it was all blank. So I'm going to ask anyone in the comments now, if you know how I can get that back so I don't have to show it like this, then please let me know because I'll do that in future videos. I rarely forget and accidentally sim past it, but we are going to be looking how we done purely based off league tables. So we won the Bundesliga by a very comfortable amount. The goal difference is outrageous there. 113 goal difference, 95 points to buy in 72. We also won the Pockel against Borussia Dortmund in what was a 3-0 win. Against Borussia Dortmund against Frankfurt. Against Frankfurt in what was a 3-0 win with Marlon, Fabian and Abraham with the goals. And we also won the Champions League against Bayern in what was a 2-0 win. So, overall, it was a very good season. Won the treble. I imagine we got some very good goal scorers in there as well. And if we were going to continue this save, we would have actually been given £122 million to spend. So, we have definitely turned this club around into probably the German giants now. Because when we took over the club, Bayern definitely had the better team. But now our team is ridiculous. I mean, and like I said, if we were going to um, carry on with this save, then this would be the reality, 122 million. One thing I want to start doing, and leave a comment if you do want to see this, obviously you can share your saves with people. Would you guys like it if I left a, like a download link to this save so you guys can carry on? Because if there's like a squad that you like, you want to see what you can do with the team, I'm more than happy to do that. So do let me know. But... This is what we've done then. So if we look at some of the things about Borussia Dortmund, obviously, you know, the training facilities, four and a half, youth four, junior coaching, three, three on the youth recruitment as well. And we, we have done very well with this club. I mean, 
first off, we've won five league titles back to back. I'm not going to do all that, but we've won five league titles all in a row without without struggling once, really. There's only one where we were tied on points and we won by goal difference. But finances are now rich. Media prediction is now first, so a bit of respect to us indeed. The final team, obviously, we saw previously, but it is honestly ridiculous. Obviously, you've got Henderson, you've got Desk, you've got Zabrani, Salisu. So actually, Zabrani getting in there now. Um, Mendes, Fabian, Bellingham, Vitinha, Stesco, Ademi, Abraham. And if you want to call it a bench, way better than a bench, you've got Cabell, Shul, Agate, Marlon, Badashil, um, Gregera, Hala. Hala? Yeah. These names, sometimes you just start rolling them off. Chabala, Brandt, Sosa, Grimaldo, Mori, Ozcan, Paslak, and Schlotterbach. And it is a very, very good team that we've left them. I mean, you're not going to get much better than that, in, in all fairness. Um, obviously, you know, you could sit here and say, yeah, you can get Mbappe and Haaland. But with this sort of side in this league, that is a very dominant team, especially this front three. I mean, that is a front three of dreams. That is everyone ended up on green links, to be honest, apart from the fullbacks to the centre-backs. But everyone else is on green links. So what a team. What a team we've built. And I, I'm honestly tempted to carry on with this save and play it sort of off-camera because it is... It's a very fun team to play with. But let's have a little look then what we have actually managed to accomplish in terms of trophies and other little milestones in five years at Dortmund. So in 2021, we were the runners-up of the Super Cup. In 2022, we were the Bundesliga champions, runners-up in the Champions League, um, which obviously wasn't great, but in, in that season, it wasn't actually too bad. Super Cup winners in 2022 as well. Um, Emre Chan got appointed as vice-captain. He was a player I didn't want to lose, but at the end of the day... We can't have players that are unhappy at the club. 2023 struck and we won the Bundesliga. We won the Pockel. We won the Champions League. We won the Super Cup. Um, I mean, four massive trophies all done in one season. So fair play to us there. Um, Marco Royce actually got stripped of captaincy and Tammy Abraham was appointed as captain. Now, I didn't make that decision. Um, that must have been a staff member because I didn't personally do that, but fair play um we were also the super cup runners up so we were actually close that year to winning five um which would have been ridiculous um 2024 season come upon us and we won the bundesliga runners up in the champions league and the super cup um bellingham got appointed as the vice captain in that year as well quite a big role for his shoulders 2025 we won the bundesliga won the pockle won the champions league won the fifa world cup and the super cup the dfl super cup and the Super Cup. So it's one, two, three, four, five. That is six trophies in one season. Powerhouse team. Powerhouse team. 2026, which is going to be the last season, is going to be Bundesliga champions, Pockel winners, and also Champions League winners. And that is going to be the end of this rebuild. But if you have enjoyed this, guys, you've enjoyed the team that we've built, you've enjoyed the trophies we've won, you like this type of content, please do leave a like on the video and comment below on the next team you want to see to get a rebuild. Because I do look at the comments. This was actually a suggestion. I always put them on like, on like a um, community post, community poll, whatever you want to call it. So do get your votes in. So I do listen. And that's going to be the team that is going to be next. Next up is going to be Newcastle, though. I will say that now. If you have enjoyed, please do leave a like on the video. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.